aphrodisiacs. Little morsels of food that are said to put you and your partner in the mood to get jiggy with it. Cooking a good meal for your significant other with care and preparation can put them in the mood. Now, I'm not saying that the food itself is doing it. I'm saying it's the thought that and the effort that actually does something most of the time, as long as you don't poison them. Oysters, an aphrodisiac that gained its fame from its suggestive shape and briny flavor. I love oysters, but if I ever put that on the table on, say, Valentine's Day night and said, here, honey, slurp up, um, I would probably be holding her hair back in the bathroom for the following hour or two. I don't know about you, but uh, light a couple candles, that is wrong. Chocolate, getting its reputation as romantic fuel, tracing its way all the way back to the Aztecs. Anytime I've ever given chocolate, it's always erupted into the conversation of, oh, if I eat this, I'm gonna get even fatter than I am. Do you think I'm fat? And there's no way to win that argument. No matter what you say, you will lose. Don't go there. The smooth flesh of an avocado is also said to be an aphrodisiac. Unless, of course, you are allergic to avocados, which I found out very quickly, my wife is. That was a fun trip to the ER. In ancient Persia, women in wedding parties sprinkled saffron on the beds of the newlyweds. Well, I guess if you're a card-carrying member of the American Express Black Card, that's an option for you. However, if you're going to the payday loan store to fund that idea, you get about this much saffron. Oh, you don't see it? Yeah, because that's how much you'll get. Studies have shown that eating alleged aphrodisiac foods have no provable psychological effects on libido. But we'll leave the final judgment call up to you.